Greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, it is a great joy to be in the presence of the Lord. At this time, we shall start our worship service. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this blessed time of worship that you've given to us on this Sunday evening. We thank you for the manifold blessings with which you are filling us and leading us in our spiritual journeys. Lord, this evening our hearts are full of joy and gratitude for all that you have been doing in our lives. We thank you for your steadfast love and faithfulness which endure forever. Lord, as we are going to start our worship service this evening, we beseech the Holy Spirit to take total control of the worship service. May this worship service be conducted for the glory of God and for the edification of the church. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. As we start our worship service, let's sing the opening hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the wildest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord by singing a few choruses. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart because he has made me glad, the Bible says. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. With glad hearts, with hearts full of joy and gratitude, let us just worship the Lord. the 
travel in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, 
If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. May the Lord add blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Let our prayer this evening be, Lord, speak to me. I want you to speak to me, Lord. Open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things from your law. Just as the sun is prayed, let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. For your word is true. Thank you, Lord, for your God who speaks to us, communicates to us through your word. This evening, our hearts are longing for you. As the deer pants for the water, so our hearts are longing for you, Lord. You are the one who satisfies the hungry hearts. This evening, as we have come into your presence to listen to your word, Holy Spirit, you be our master or teacher. Lead us into the fullness of your truth. You know our spiritual condition alone. You know what we need tonight. So feed us with your spiritual manna. Hide me, thy servant, behind the cross. Put your word in my mouth. Speak to every one of us who is hearing the word of God tonight. And may the work of the Holy Spirit be accomplished in every one of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, the sermon title that we have tonight is Facing the Tests of Life. Facing the Tests of Life. We all know that the Israelites have crossed the Red Sea. And they are so fresh and jubilant, vibrant, because the Egyptian bondage is over. They have triumphed by the gracious hand of the Lord. They all are in a jubilant mood. You know, if you see uh, the beginning verses of chapter 15, they are singing this jubilant song. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its riders he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. You know, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. You know, the people kept worshipping the Lord, exalting the name of the Lord, because he has triumphed over the enemies of Israel. Now, with this jubilant mood, they have started their early steps into the promised land. They are going through the wilderness. Three days have passed. Now see what has happened. In verse 22 onwards. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. Please look into your Bibles, verse 22. And now when they came to Mara, they could not drink water because it was bitter. That's why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Now, all the vibrant, jubilant mood has vanished because they were walking in the wilderness facing the brunt of the heat of the sun. All their water and food resources were exhausted. And now, they're struggling for water. Now, there were almost 2 million people, including children and women. They were finding it very hard to walk in the heat of the sun. They were looking for water. At last, they might have found an oasis or a well nearby. I think they might have had a huge sigh of relief. Oh, at last we got water. And when they went to the water to drink, and they plunged their you know, throats, and they were drinking you know, with much eagerness, they were terribly disappointed because 
the water was not at all, you know, uh, sweet. It was so bitter, they are unable to drink it. Now, the people grumble against Moses. What are we to drink? Dear brothers and sisters, this is the first test that the Israelites faced as soon as they crossed the Red Sea. You know, they couldn't bear the heat. You know, they can't bear this situation. Three days, where was the song? The Lord is my strength and my salvation. He has exalted. Where is the song now? The song has vanished. In the place of the song, in the place of worship, there came grumbling, grumbling. We all face tests in our spiritual journey. God allows tests in our lives. How are we facing tests in our lives? Sometimes we go through financial crisis. Sometimes there will be breakdown in our health. There will be disruption in our family. You know, some people, they grumble, like they, they, they cheat on us. Sometimes people mock at us, persecute us. You know, we find various kinds of tests in our lives. How are we facing them? It is a big challenge. See, being a born-again Christian or believer doesn't make you immune to the tests and trials of life. You and I have to go through these phases, trials and tests, different phases. These keep on coming till the end of your life, these tests and trials you have to face. But the important thing that we have to learn is how are we facing these tests and trials? Now, Israelites failed to cope up with this test. They failed and they grumbled against Moses. What are we to drink? You know, then Moses cried out to the Lord. The Greek, the Hebrew word says, raising a loud voice, he was wailing, Oh Lord, please give us water. The people are struggling. And the Lord showed him a piece of wood and he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. Just within a few minutes, situation has turned around. There was a shift in the situation because Moses cried out and God showed him an answer and, and, and the, the, this problem was solved instantly. And then the Lord made a decree and law for them, he said. And there he tested them. There the Lord tested them, he said. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord your healer. Dear brothers and sisters, if only they have prayed, if only they have waited on the Lord, things would have been different. You know, because Elim, the next the spot, was Elim. Elim was just seven miles away, a couple of hours away from Mara. If only they waited upon the Lord, things would have been different and they would have enjoyed not only the water, but the sweet fellowship of the Lord. The Lord is the one who allows us to go through tests in our spiritual life. Because it is for our good to strengthen our faith. This evening, I want to bring out three important uh, secrets of facing the tests of life. How you and I should face the tests of life. Three important things I'd like to share with you. You can note them. The first thing is, consider tests as part of our spiritual journey. Consider tests as part of our spiritual journey. You know why many people get disappointed, dejected and depressed and give up their Christian faith? Because they become disillusioned in Christian life. Because they think, oh following Jesus Christ means I get all things. Because these days there are false teachings going on. Like prosperity gospel. People say if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will get you know, cars, you'll get bungalows, you'll not have any difficulties, you'll be blessed, you'll receive blessings, that's it. But, the Bible says, other way around. Those who want to live a godly life will suffer persecution. That's what 2 Timothy 3 says. You will suffer persecution. If you want to live a godly life, you will face tests and trials because God allows them so that you will go through them, so that you will win them successfully, so that your faith will be strengthened day by day. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. Please turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. 
Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. So Moses, he is reiterating the whole law. He's just summarizing the 40 years of the wilderness experience. He says, remember how the Lord has led you all these 40 years. How the Lord has tested you so that he wants to know what's there in your heart. He wants to ensure whether you are following him in faith or not. God is testing you. You know, the devil tempts you in order to bring you down. God tests you in order to lift you up. God tests you, tests you. You know, a man of God says, man's extremity is God's opportunity. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. When you have to go through extremes, you say, oh God, yes, that is the opportunity for God to build you up so that you will exercise the wings of faith. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. The believer has to feel joyful. The believer has to be glad when, you, when he or she faces trials of different kinds. You know, this is opposite to the world. The worldly people, they, they're disappointed when they face trials and tests. But believer has to be joyful, happy, because God is working out something good. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whether, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Something is developing in you. That is perseverance, endurance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God wants you to come to the level of perfection, completion maturity in order to attain that level of maturity and perfection you must go through these tests and trials you can't think of becoming mature or perfect without going through trials and temptations so consider tests as part of our spiritual journey that is the first thing you and i must remember god is allowing you to go through tests second thing that i want to bring to your notice is Call upon the name of the Lord. When you face test, yes, you must believe that God is allowing me to go through this test. What shall I do now? I will seek the Lord. I will call upon the name of the Lord. You know, God expects his people to look to him whenever there is need. God wants his people to depend on him. You know, just you can uh, compare and contrast the attitudes of the rest of the Israelites and Moses. You know, when they were faced with this trial, they were crying out, you know, they were grumbling against Moses or they were grumbling against the Lord because it means the same thing. When they were grumbling against Moses, they were grumbling, in fact, against the Lord. What are we to drink? But Moses didn't grumble. Moses cried out to the Lord. God expected the same thing from the Israelites. He expected the children of God to cry out to him. But instead of crying out to him, they grumbled against him. Moses cried out to the Lord. That is what God expects from you and me, my dear brother and sister. God wants you and I to call upon his name. Because he is the source of source and provider of all our needs. God wants us to look to him. Psalm chapter 50 was... 15. We all know that verse. It's a familiar verse. Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. What a wonderful promise of the Lord. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. I will deliver you and you will honor me. God is ready to help you out from every trouble, any trial. When Trouble hits you, when temptation hits you, trial hits you, come on, call upon the name of the Lord and he will deliver you. God is there to deliver you. You know, dear brothers and sisters, the important thing that I want to bring to your notice is 
God doesn't want us to find satisfaction in material things. See, if Israelites would have found water easily, you know, they would have been satisfied instantly. But that satisfaction is temporal. But if they would have cried out to the Lord and found answer from Him, you know, what would have happened? They would have found greatest joy and true satisfaction in the Lord, in the victory of the Lord, along with the material things, along with the satisfaction from water or whatever material things are there. So, God wants us to find true satisfaction, great joy in Him. But you know what humankind wants? Man wants satisfaction from material things. But the material things can't give you lasting satisfaction. It's only temporal. They would have thirsted again. They would have longed for something again. The material things can't give you permanent satisfaction. God wants his children to call upon him, exercise their faith, and thereby get things done through him so that their satisfaction is double. Their joy is so great. God wants you and I to call upon him so that he will deliver you and you will not only find satisfaction through the material things, you will find great joy and true satisfaction in and through him. So consider tests as part of our spiritual journey. Call upon the name of the Lord when you face tests. Third thing is, cling on to the promises of God. This is also a very, very important thing that you and I must learn. When you face tests and trials of various kinds, learn to cling on to the promises of God. Sometimes when you pray, things won't happen. Instantly. God may not answer you immediately. It may take a while. But you can cling on to the promises of God. God wants us to hold on to his word. You know how God responded uh, later you can see in verse uh, 26 onwards. Yeah. If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, you are God and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring any disaster or disease upon you. So what God wanted from them is, yes, you know, you, 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 you were really thirsty, you are really hungry, you desperately wanted water, but listen to what God is telling. Exercise your faith. Instead of crying out, instead of grumbling, instead of getting frustrated, Seek the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Do things in his ways. I really love the famous quotation by Hudson Taylor. God's work done in God's way will never lack supplies. God's work must be done in his way so that you will never, never lack supplies. God is there to supply us all our needs. But things must be done in his ways. God wants us to cling on to his promises. He who promised is faithful. He who has led out of Egyptian bondage. He who has promised us to take us to the promised land. He will not abandon us in this wilderness. He will not leave you in this life's journey. He will certainly lead you to the destiny. He will not abandon you in this life full of wilderness. He will guide you till the end. But you must cling on to the promises of God. God is true. God is true. To his promises. Psalm 119 verse 148. See what the psalmist is doing. That's what you and I are supposed to do. Psalm 119 verse 148. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. The psalmist is staying awake whole night. You know why? He was meditating on the promises of God. Sometimes things get harder. The tests are so severe. The trials are unbearable. God knows what you're going through. And God wants you to consider that these are part of your spiritual journey. 
God wants you to call upon the name of the Lord. And God wants you to cling on to his promises. Cling. God is testing you. He who has promised you is faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is there in all your life's journey, in your trials. He is there in your lion's den. He is there in the prison. He is there in the burning furnace along with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He is there. He is faithful to his word. God wants you to exercise faith. He wants you to cling on to his promises. You know, once Adoni Ram Jetson, a missionary to Burma, we all know about him. Adoni Ram Jetson went to Burma to serve the Lord, but he couldn't find any initial success. You know, for seven years he labored, but he couldn't win a single convert. He was put into prison. You know, his family suffered losses. You know, when he was in terrible state of despair in the prison, a fellow prisoner sarcastically asked, like, asked him like that, Mr. Judson, what do you think about the prospects of missionary work in Burma? What are the prospects of missionary work in Burma? You know what Judson replied? The prospects are as brighter as the promises of God. Hallelujah. The prospects are as brighter as the promises of God. External circumstances may be so dark. Things are not at all favorable. There is no sign of hope. But the prospects are brighter because his promises are brighter. Cling on to the promises of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says, All the promises of God, hundreds and thousands of promises in the scriptures are Amen in Christ Jesus. They all are yes in Christ Jesus. He is a merciful and faithful high priest. He will bring things to pass in your life. He will make all things, all the promises come true in your life. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. God is testing you. God is testing you. You know, ultimately, He wants to bring good in our lives. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, All things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to His promise, or according to His purpose. So the sermon title, let us be reminded once again, facing the tests of life. You know, Israelites, after they have failed the first test, they haven't learned much. They kept on failing. Again and again they grumbled. For the sake of meat, they grumbled. For the sake of something else, they grumbled. Again and again they grumbled. And God was frustrated with their grumblings. And he promised, they will not enter the rest. They will not enter the promised land. You know, thousands of people were perished in the wilderness. They couldn't enter the promised land because they failed the tests. You and I have to go through tests in life. You are not immune to these tests and trials. Trials of various kinds. Some trials you may not even uh, are able to express to others. But you have to go through. You have to go through. But he who promised is faithful. Consider the tests are essential part of our spiritual journey. And you keep calling on the name of the Lord instead of grumbling, just like Moses, cry out to God. Keep on calling instead of grumbling, instead of complaining, and keep on clinging to the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. And eventually, God will bring you out of the, of the trials and He will lead you to higher levels of maturity. So may God enable us to attain that higher levels of maturity in spiritual life. Even as we go through tests in life. Even as we face these tests by the grace of God. And overcome them. Successfully overcome them. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's bow down our heads. Close our eyes. And we shall look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father. We thank you and we praise you. For your blessed word with which you have visited us tonight. Thank you Lord. 
for your word is a two-edged sword, sharper than any sword, which pierces our joints, our marrows, our bones, even the deepest parts of our lives. This evening, thank you for speaking to every heart. Yes, Lord, as we are moving towards our spiritual destiny, we find severe tests and trials in our life's journey. We can't escape them. We have to go through those things. You are the one who allows us to go through the tests and trials. But thank you for explaining to us how we could successfully pass out these tests and move forward in spiritual life. Help us to consider these tests as essential part of our spiritual journey. Help us to raise our voice. Help us to call upon the name of the Lord in the time of trouble. Instead of looking here and there, instead of grumbling, and complaining and looking for some other help, help us to call upon the name of the Lord. Help us to cling on to the promises of God when it takes time. Help us to know that God wants us to find true satisfaction and great joy in and through Him rather than material possessions. Lord, as many people are trying to find satisfaction, through material things. As people are failing in the tests of life, Lord, even as the world is going through a severe crisis, thank you for reminding us that we are in tests. We have to go through these tests, but you are there to supply us with all your grace and power. Just like Moses, help us to cry out to you, cling out to your promises, and you will successfully lead us into the promised land. May the word bear fruit in every one of our lives this evening. Lord, help us to stay true to the commitments that we have made in your presence this evening. I pray for those brothers and sisters who are facing severe tests in their lives, Lord. I know and I believe that you have great plans for each one of our lives. You are faithful. You who have called us out from the darkness into your wonderful light. You have called us all faithful and you will successfully carry us through to the promised land. Help us to wait upon you. We thank you for your visiting Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for partaking in English worship service. Hopefully... May God's grace will meet next Sunday exactly by 7 p.m. May God bless you and your families.